AI is the future of rendering, and to prove it, I'm going to develop a workflow that lets you render any 3D scene in any style. It will also offer full control over the final image, so you can create separate prompts for all the different objects in your scene. Finally, I want to put this workflow to the test. A few months ago, I created a fully AI-generated 3D short film. Everything from the modeling to the texturing to the animation was done with AI, except for the rendering. So today I want to fix that. Can I take this pretty ugly looking scene and turn it into something that actually looks cool with this AI workflow? Yes, yes I can. Let me show you how. First, we need a 3D scene. And for beginners, I prepared an example scene with all my settings and a super extended bonus tutorial on my Patreon. But I want to reuse some scenes that I created a while ago. Let's start with this Zelda fan animation I created for TikTok. So I delete the image sequence and make the scene 16 by 9. And I create a super simple 3D environment with just a plain and some cubes. I also delete all the materials and lights from the scene, because all of that will be handled by the AI. And before we render the full sequence, let's do some tests on a single frame to find the right prompt. And this is the frame that I want to work with. Now we need a way to communicate to the AI what to generate. And for that we're going to use render passes. In traditional VFX workflows we render all the layers that the renderer uses to create the final image separately. And this way we can control every aspect of the image, for example how reflective it should be, without having to re-render everything when we want to make changes. But we can also use these render passes to control AI image generation with a little thing called control net. Let's say we have an image and we really like the composition. We can use an AI preprocessor to estimate, for example, the depth of this image to generate a new one based on this depth information. And these preprocessors are getting better and better, but especially for image sequences, they can still flicker a lot because it's just AI estimation after all. But we don't need to estimate anything because we have a 3D scene. We have have all this information. So in my Blender scene I go to View Layer Properties, Activate Z and render out an image. In the Compositing tab I click Use Nodes and connect a Viewer node to the depth output. Now the depth information is in there, but we can't see it yet because it's all over the place. But we need it between 0 and 1 for black and white. So to get them there I just add a Map Range node and play around with these values until I see a black and white gradient of my whole scene. We also need to invert these values so that black pixels are far away and white pixels are close to us. Finally I use a curve node to adjust the values a bit more and try to separate the parts of the image. And I'm just eyeballing this and this is not really the correct way to do it, but it works and it's super fast. Finally I add a file output node at the end. I set my output path and double check if the color management of my scene is set to standard. And this is really important. With the depth pass alone we should be able to generate some really amazing images, but to be safe I want to generate another pass. One of the most commonly used control nets is the Kenny one, or any control net that uses lines in the image to guide image generation. And first again you would use a preprocessor to find the edges in an image or video and then use them to guide your image. And as you can see they flicker a lot. But again, since we have the 3D geometry, we don't need a preprocessor. Instead, I'll activate the Freestyle tool that will create outlines based on the 3D geometry. To export them, I go to View Layer, Freestyle, check as Render Pass, set the color to white, reduce the thickness just a little bit, render an image and create this node setup in the Compositing tab. Finally, we need a pass for masking out the individual areas for our prompts. And there is a render pass called Cryptomat that does exactly that. But unfortunately, it does not work with the AI tools yet. So we have to create our own simplified version. Let's say I want to create separate prompts for this guardian, the ground, the background and these cubes. I just assign simple emission shaders to them and choose some random colors. Later we can assign each color an individual prompt. And that's it, we're done. These are all our passes. So now I go over to ConfUI, a node-based interface for stable diffusion. It's super easy to install and I created a free step-by-step -step guide for that, including the links to all the models that you'll need and the information on where to put them. And you'll find the link in the video description. So once you have everything set up, you can just download my free SDXL image workflow and just drag and drop that into the ConfUI interface. So this is our full image workflow and we're going to work from left to right. On the left here you import your images and set your scene resolution. And you can see that the first one, the mask pass here, 
goes straight into the extract mask setup. And here you don't have to do much, but you have to put in the hex codes for all the different colors here. You do that for all the masks and to see if it worked, I'm going to deactivate this last part by pressing Ctrl B and click Q prompt. And you can see how fast that was. So next to these masks here, to the previews, you find the corresponding prompts. Up here you find a master prompt and this one is added to all the other prompts, to the whole image. And I would put like the general style in there and the light that you want. Next, I already put in some regional prompts. So I want to create a squid like an octopus standing in the ocean with some white marble coming out of it. And also I want thunderstorm clouds, epic landscape, vast ocean, a very epic atmosphere. And down here is my negative prompt that's also added to the whole image. Next, our two other passes are loaded into these control nets. And the first one is the depth control net that I'm going to use at full strength. Maybe reduce that just a little bit to give it a bit more freedom. And then the candy one I use at a very low strength. So finally, we can activate these nodes again by pressing Ctrl B and click Q prompt to generate our image. And after a few seconds, we have our final image and this one is very, very, very creepy. Oh my god. Uh. Let's let's try something less creepy. Um, no, actually, let's try another creepy version. But let's make it more dystopian. Let's make it an alien crab standing on like a, an alien planet surface. And these blocks are like buildings and uh, metal structures, construction site stuff. In the background, I want to have city ruins, skyscraper, something that this crab destroyed. Let's click Q prompt. Oh yeah, this looks pretty nice. Maybe we can make it a bit more epic by changing the lighting a little bit. So I'm going to add thunderstorm, rain, wet surfaces. And because we added like rain and wet surfaces here, this will be added to all these other prompts. So we don't have to put that there again, but I'm going to add puddles to the floor, to the ground plane. So let's click Q prompt. Yeah, that's epic. Look at these surfaces here, but this guy is still very creepy. Let's do one final image. Let's create a foggy mystical atmosphere. The guardian becomes a futuristic robot. We're trying to make these cubes uh, into trees or at least wood. Let's see how that goes. And they are in the deep rainforest. And here is our final image. Okay, now it created like these wooden houses, which is okay, but let's actually change them into uh, rock formations. Yeah, I prefer that. That looks really cool. I love how Stable Diffusion, even though we have prompts for all the different areas, really understands the whole image and the geometry of it. So the light is coming from the correct direction. We have the robot casting shadows here. We have reflections. It looks so good. But let's say we like this image and we just want to change the composition. That's not a problem. I just go back into Blender, make the changes that I want. In ComfyUI, I switch out my passes and render the image again. And you can see since we used the same seed and prompt to generate this image, it's pretty similar to the other one. So using this technique, we could generate consistent concept art or even whole storyboards for a movie, for example. We could also project these images that we generated back onto the geometry in our Blender scene to texture them. And I've covered this workflow in one of my older videos. Make sure to check that out. But let's take it one step further. Let's create some animation. The preparation is pretty much the same as for the image workflow, but instead of a single image, we render out the whole sequence. I import my free 3D rendering video workflow, and as you can see, it looks very similar to the image workflow. And that's because it is. So I copy the path to all my image sequences and put them in here and repeat that for the depth pass and the line art pass. And here you should set the maximum number of frames. To save some time, I also want to only generate every second frame and then interpolate between them. And that's why I chose the select every nth second here. And then right before the output here, there is this Rife node that will interpolate the frames. So we get the original 24 frames per second. You can put in the prompt and I'll start with the squid one that we tested before, Q prompt. Wow, this looks really cool. Okay, it still has this AI weirdness going on, but what I really love about this workflow is that it not only textures things, it also animates things like this ocean. Look at these waves. Now let's try a few more prompts.
Okay, this scene has a lot of camera movement and is really hard with all the uh, tentacle things. So let's try another scene and maybe go for a more stylized look this time. The next scene is still an octopus though. I don't know that, I'm sorry, that was just a coincidence. So I created my render passes just like before and now let's try a few prompts. Let's just try octopus snorkeling in space. That looks cool. It's still a bit creepy though, but I have an idea how we can make it more beautiful. Let's turn it into an animated painting. I just downloaded this painting, Laura. Put it in my comp UI folder structure and edit it here in the beginning of the node tree. And let's put the strength to one and change the master prompt to something that will amplify this painterly style. Oh, I love this. That's so cool. Let's try some more prompts. Okay, I think you see how amazingly customizable this workflow is. You can basically turn your renderings into any style you want. But now I really want to put this workflow to the test. A few months ago, I generated a whole CG short film with AI. I used ChatGPT to help me with a story, generated the models with Luma Labs Genie, animated them with Motion, and generated the facial animation with Nvidia Audio to Face. So pretty much the whole film was generated with AI, but it was not rendered by AI. So with this new workflow, let's try to fix that. And let's try this shot here. Linguini is running away from the goulash. Here are my render passes. These are my prompts. And let's render the scene. Look how it was able to transform the style into something that looks so much more like a Pixar movie than the original rendering. I mean, sure, we, ha we still have some weird AI stuff going on, especially in the background, but that probably won't be an issue in a few weeks anymore because we are using a very early version of the motion model here and it's only trained on eight frames. But we can already improve this consistency a lot by using an IP adapter. And you can find the setup in my advanced workflow. An IP adapter takes an image or a sequence and turns it into a sort of prompt guiding image generation. And I want to load in this rendering with textures to help guide the new images. And this way this workflow becomes more of a filter for our original rendering. But I honestly prefer the renderings without any visual visual information in them. And you're always more flexible this way. Let's say you want to change the kitchen from this modern aluminum kitchen into a cottage kitchen with wood and brass. Or you could decide that this chase scene should happen in a forest at night. In the end you have to figure out what works for your scene and don't be afraid to play around with the models, the prompts and really make this workflow your own. If you want to help me make these kinds of videos and gain access to the advanced versions, extra example files and an additional in-depth tutorial, consider supporting me on Patreon. So thank you very much for watching to the end and thank you to my lovely Patreon supporters who make these videos possible.